So my first student identified correctly that that was the one that was different than all the others. That's not even one over X. This is one over X, but here's where normally it would be. Do you get how this one has been shifted to the left? This one got shifted left. This one, I'm gonna draw in the asymptotes. Maybe that'll help you see it. That one got shifted to the right a little bit and up a little bit. Here's the asymptotes on this one. Do you see that that one got shifted right? When it got shifted, budged over to the right a little bit. All right. Horizontal asymptotes look like the horizon. They go this way. And if you forgot it already since yesterday, which I could see happening, I'm going to give you a dumb word to remember. Horizontal and vertical. So why those two words? Because vertical asymptotes are x equals asymptotes. And horizontal are y equals asymptotes. Okay. So if we look at one of the graphs of these things, oh, we're not going to be doing oblique asymptotes. Uh, don't worry, that's, that is only an honors pre-calc. Okay. So here's one. There's my graph. Compared to the original, do you get how this one got shifted to the right and up a little bit? Does that make sense to you? Okay. This line here is the horizontal. So it's the horizontal. And it's y equals like 1 or however high up that shifted. This one's the vertical asymptote, also known as the vertical x equals. And x equals what? Well, I don't know. Let's say this is like 8. Well, then x would equal 8. And then last but not least, you get an equation that looks like this. 1 over x, and that's the parent one. But this one got shifted 8 to the right, minus 8. And this is where it got shifted up 1. That horizontal line there, it's up 1 plus 1. There's your equation. There's the graph of it. And I just described the asymptotes. Do you have any questions about what we learned yesterday? Because today is just a repeat of that. Yes? So, you know, like, the perfect points, like, I'm just confused about what you do. Good question. The perfect points. Here's a perfect point, and here's a perfect point. And so you know they're kind of close to where x is 8. But they're not x is 8, because, look, if I put in x is 8, do you get it just makes a 0 on the bottom? So if you're making the xy chart and you want to find the perfect points, find 8 because that gives you the asymptote. And do you get that we're just on either side of that? So then it's a 1 in front of 8 and there's going to be 1 after 8. So then what's right in front of 8? 7. Let's stick in 7 and see what we get. What's 1 over 7 minus 8? That's 1 over negative 1. 1 over negative 1 makes negative 1 plus 1, which is 0. And that's one of the perfect points. In fact, that's this one. See? 7, 0, because it touches right on the x-axis. What's the other perfect point? Just on the other side of the asymptote, which would be 9. Put in a 9 right here. You get 1 over 1, which is 1. 1 plus 1, 2. And that's this point right here, 9 comma 2. All right. So I'm going to give you a new one. Please, everybody, draw this. Look up at the board. Draw this. It's going through negative 4. Mr. T, can you unplug and then look up here and copy this down. You aren't going to get this unless you have an example in your head here. This is the graph. And it got shifted 4 to the left and up 
three. I could ask you for three things. I could ask you for the equation of this thing. It's one over x, but you gotta tweak it a little bit. The second thing I could ask for is, what are the asymptotes? x equals one thing and y equals another. Remember, horizontal and vertical. It'll help you remember which one's the horizontal one. The horizontal one. Okay, and the last thing is, I could ask you for those perfect points. I know there's one here, and there's one here. But exactly where are they? Hopefully you can tell by the asymptote. All right. So I'll help you. But please try this with me. All right, Connor, do you know your horizontal from your vertical? Yes. Okay. Which one of those two numbers is the horizontal one? The three or the negative four? Yeah, I agree. Yep. That's actually a three. It's just a dotted line, so it looks like a negative three. Okay, so that's a, that's a three. So that is my horizontal asymptote. The horizontal asymptote is at y equals three. That one's the horizontal one. I know those can be confusing. I get that. You might have thought that it was x equals 3. That's not x equals 3. Look, it's on the y-axis. Okay, and the other one must be just be the other one, negative 4. And that's the up and down one called the vertical. Parker, has this been making sense to you? Okay. Are you fully with me or are you doing something else? Okay, good, good, good. Just making sure. So... You get that this right here, this line I just drawing on, that one's the horizontal. You get the horizontal lines go this way? Yeah. Okay. And you see it's going through a three. All right. And so then how do I know that that's y equals three? You just have to memorize that the lines that go this way are the y lines. Yeah. Okay. And I tried to give you a word, horizontal. Yeah. And then this one's vertical. And that's the up and down line. That's, that's like this line right here. Okay, then the only thing left is, which way did I move that thing? Because this tells me how far left or right I moved it. Like, let's say I did plus seven, that would mean I moved left seven. And let's say I said plus two, that would mean up two. But that's not right. Would everybody please figure out this equation right here? Which way did I move it? Did I move it left or right? Eddie, which way did I move it? Left how far? So should I say plus four or minus four? Plus four, plus four is left four, very good. Trucky, did I move it up or down? Up, up how much? Uh, three. So where do I put that? Uh, at the end of the equation. Yep, plus three. There's my equation. Okay. So if you had this equation, it would take your parent graph and move it four to the left and up three and here's my vertical and my horizontal and if you can get these from this do you get the one on the outside here look at this that number goes with that and the opposite of this number goes with this why because you can't trust the stuff on the inside with the x you can't trust this stuff so it's always the opposite of what you think yes sir Okay, remember that deal where you'd think it would be positive 4? Because look, there's a positive 4 in there. But stuff on the inside, there's no parentheses, but I could put parentheses. Maybe that would help. You get the stuff on the inside of the parentheses is always the opposite of what you would think. That's why it's negative 4. Because if I look at the graph, too, look, what would here's where 0 is. Do you get negative 4 is over there, so it should be negative 4? Okay. All right. And then last but not least is the two perfect points. And you asked me about this earlier, and you remember how I started with the asymptote was at x equals negative 4. And then I stick it in and I make sure that works. And I go, if I put in negative 4, do you see how that whole thing's going to turn into 1 over 0, which doesn't even exist? So that's the asymptote. And if you want the perfect points, just go on both sides of the asymptote. Okay? Kohler, can you tell me if I went just a little 
above the negative 4 or a little below the negative 4? What are those two numbers going to be? Yep, I'm going to put negative 3 here and negative 5 there. It doesn't really matter whether you put one spot or the other. Now I'm going to go stick the negative 3 in this equation. you got to put a negative 3 right there. And what do I get? Then I get 1 over 1, which is 1. 1 plus 3 is 4. Cool. Negative 3 went in, and I got 4. That's one of the perfect points. The only other perfect point there will be is if you put in negative 5. And negative 5 goes in right here. And I get 1 over negative 1, which is negative 1. Negative 1 plus 3. Negative 1 plus 3 is 2. And there's my perfect points. That's it. Okay, I need to do a little bit of review. I have decided that the test would be too hard to try to give you tomorrow. It's just too much. Okay, but I need to do a little bit of review of common denominator stuff. And then we'll finish with this graphing again. And, but let's, like, take a brain break from that. And just see if you can do this for me. X squared plus 3X minus 4 over x squared minus 16. <coughs> Factor it. Stuff will cancel. And then, a little more complicated, we're timesing it by... x minus 4 over x. That is as complicated as it could be on the test. If you can factor it, you should. And then once it's factored, stuff cancels. And then after everything's canceled, you just have to multiply them across the top and across the bottom. See if you can do it. So. Let's see if you were able to factor this. I can factor. Can you factor? I got this to x minus, nope, x plus 4 and x minus 1. Now, how do I know that's right? Because if I put this and this together, I get positive 3x, and that's right here. So, yay, I factored it. Then this on the top is good. On the bottom, x plus 4, x minus 4. And do you see happy coincidence? I think not. I made that on purpose to cancel. Then... I'll do this one in black, and it comes down, and I have x minus 4 over x. And does anybody else see something else that could cancel? Pluto? Correct. That's gone. And sadly, some people think that x can even cancel, but no. The x minus 1 is part of a subtract problem, so you cannot cancel the very last two x's. So that's it. You're done. That's the end of the problem. Did anybody beat me to it? You had that on your paper before I did? Sweet. Okay. So what if they ask you to take this and give them three points on it? Well, my first point would be the asymptote. I'd think to myself, what makes this have a zero on the bottom? Eddie, can you tell me what number I could put in? And if I put in a 9, I get the asymptote. And then I'm going to find numbers right around that because those will always work well. So like 10 and like 8. But everybody please figure out what 10 and 8 give you because those are the perfect points. Pausing. Okay, you should have put in a 8 and then gotten 1 over negative 1, which makes negative 1. Negative 1 plus the 5 makes 4. Did you get 8, comma 4? Raise your hand if you had 8, 4. Good. And then it was a 10, and a 10 goes in, and then I get 10 minus 1 is, is 10 minus 9 is 1. 1 over 1 is 1. 1 plus 5 is 6. Those are my perfect points. If I wanted to graph them, I could just go to 8, comma 4 and put a dot. Perfect point there. Nine's the asymptote. I'll use a different color line for that. 
and 10 comma 6 is like right there is the other perfect point. I'm going to make those uh, blue. And then, last but not least, the other asymptote. Have anybody caught on to this yet? It's that number. Okay, and that's a horizontal asymptote. And it goes right between those two perfect points. I made it a straight line. I didn't mean to. I'm going to try to do that again. It's supposed to be a dotted line. And then, I shouldn't have used blue. Duh. I'm going to use red again. So both asymptotes are red. And that asymptote is at y equals 5. This one was at x equals 9, gave us that asymptote. The other one's at y equals 5. It's whatever the number is on the outside. So this is y equals 5. This is x equals, what was it again, 9. And then once you got your two perfect points, it gets closer and closer never touches. Like the little kid who knows their tongue will stick to the mailbox and gets really close, but then doesn't actually stick their tongue to the mailbox because they know it hurt too much. My brother and my sister used to... Well, mostly my brother liked to annoy my sister, and so he would get his finger so close to her shoulder, just, just, just continually get closer and closer and closer and closer. He wouldn't actually touch her because he knew that then mom would yell at him. So he'd just get his finger really close to her shoulder, and she'd be like, Stop it! Stop it! And he would get infinitely close, but never touched. So it was basically an asymptote. Okay. There's graphing. We even practiced this stuff, which is also on your test. Why is this on the same test? Because see how I ended up with a fraction with X's in it? Well, this is graphing a fraction with X's in it. If I asked you to graph this one, I'd just make an XY chart. Stick in some numbers. Okay. So... Get to the homework. I think I've covered everything that would be in these notes. Um, if I had to just go directly to, like, what are the asymptotes here? I go horizontal is your horizontal. Y equals for that guy. And the vertical is the vertical asymptotes. That one's right on the asymptote, or right on the axis, so it's zero. And this one looks like it's been moved down one, so it'd be negative one. There's my asymptotes. Okay, this one got moved right one and up two. How about that one? Eddie, which way is this, left or right? Uh, left three, and the other one? Uh, down. Yep, down two. They're pretty easy. If you had to graph it, we already practiced this. You always make an XY chart. You always start with the asymptote. J. James, look at this. What number could I put right there that would make it have a zero on the bottom? Uh, one. Yep, so one is the asymptote. And then I always say to start with that because then you can go right above it, which would be zero, and right below it, which would be two, and those will give you your two perfect points. So if I stick in a zero, I'd have negative one plus two is one. And if I put in a two, I'd have two minus one is one. One over one is one. One plus two is three. And there's my perfect points. The asymptotes at one. So negative one means it moved right one. Yep. This whole thing moves right one and up two. The other asymptotes at y equals two. And the perfect points were at 2 comma 3 and 0 comma 1. And there's my graph. Okay. If you just had to get the asymptotes quick, I can do it. Can you do it? This one's x equals what makes it 0 down there? x equals what? Come on, say it. Regular three would make it six down there. Negative three. And this one, 
y equals whatever's out there, negative 2. Those are my two asymptotes. Could have done this by graphing it and then moving it left 3 and down 2. That's where it'll go. And then I'd make my xy chart. Always start with the asymptote, the thing that makes the bottom 0, negative 3. And then I'd just put in a number above it and a negative and one below it. This was the asymptote. Okay, I think we've just said enough. They threw in a negative on this one. Here's what it looks like normally. I did this on the first day, but it might have been too much. Like yesterday, I talked about this. That negative in the front, do you get that that makes it flip? And it goes like here and here. And then these go away. You guys remember that? A negative makes something flip. Okay, so good news. Good news is you do not have to be an expert at this yet because we're not testing tomorrow. We're reviewing tomorrow. And then we're reviewing again on Monday because I don't like Tuesday tests or like Monday tests. So we're testing Tuesday. Okay, so a lot of review between now and Tuesday. So if you don't feel ready for the test yet, that's the, that's kind of, I agree. You might be okay at the test right now, but I don't know if you did do real well. So, uh, oh, wait. This would be the ultimate kind. And if you're like, oh, that's too complicated. Just one thing at a time. Make your XY chart. Find the asymptote. That would be four. Because look, it makes the bottom zero. That's one of your asymptotes is x equals four. The other asymptotes, y equals 1. Once you graph those, y equals 1, x equals 4. Just need two perfect points. There's probably one here and one here. Done. Oh, wait, the negative in front. That'll make it flip to the red ones. All right, so what's your homework? So you got a worksheet and work on that and please come up and ask me questions if you have questions.